So what I thought we could do here, uh, this is the 800XL that was featured in the previous two videos, the Rapidus Sophia Ultimate One Megabyte 800XL. What I thought we could do here is have a little look uh, at the different modes of operation and how stable or otherwise things appear to be in each of these modes of operation. So we have the Ultimate One Megabyte here. Um, in the course of testing this machine, I discovered a bug in the Rapidus plugin that I was just about to release. Uh, it completely failed to initialize the side two cartridge, so I fixed that. So that was thank you for that for just being here. That was uh, very useful indeed. Um, now this plugin, uh, which we see uh, here, side Rapidus plugin, uh, gives you an extra option down here, Rapidus Core. Now I'm going to turn that off, and that is going to take us to our base configuration of no Rapidus. Uh, well, the only way we can go further than that is to physically take Rapidus out of the machine, uh, in which case it works perfectly well and predictably in all ways, but that's beside the point. So we'll save that. It seems to be a bounce on this keyboard as well, something else to fix. Um, and we'll, we'll power off and restart the machine. So no repeat is caught all here. Yeah. And this is accomplished by the ground wire on the three pin connector of the repeat is going to one of the um, ultimate one megabyte signal uh, ports. And if we have 3.3 volts on that uh, signal, it effectively turns off repeat us altogether. Uh, so here we are, we've got the, the hard disk here, on the side 2 cartridge, wonderful, um, everything looking very nice. We press reset here. In this mode, sort of super legacy mode, i.e. no repeat as core at all, system reset plunges the machine into dense blackness from which it will never re-emerge. Oh, there we go. So I press reset again while it was uh, in the hung state there, and here we get this delightful display. Uh, which actually uh, indicates a complete failure of the I.O. RAM uh, under the chipset area uh, of the Ultimate One Megabyte. So there was just a lot of uh, FFs there, uh, which is absolutely delightful. The um, Prolia missile system is completely broken down. Um, haven't run into this, this, this one too often on this machine, uh, but it does happen from time to time. Okay, so um, if we try and get into the menu proper, there we go, it suddenly decided to come right there, that's very nice. This only happens when Rapidus is plugged into the machine, by the way. So there are no underlying stability issues on this machine, even when Adaptus and all the ribbon cable that shifts this processor to the top corner of the motherboard, even if that's all still there, if the Rapidus board comes out, everything works perfectly. Tested, proven, conclusive. Anyway, so the plugin gives us this extra option. We can go in here and we can enable Rapidus. Enable the Rapidus core. We'll press S. I don't know why that key bounces. I think I better have a look at the keyboard in this machine as well. How delightful. So now we have uh, Rapidus enabled. I'm going to reboot the machine. Now we see the Rapidus core. I don't know why the hotkey for the Rapidus core doesn't actually take you into the Rapidus menu if you press it during the boot sequence, but never mind. I'm going to go in here to the Rapidus menu. And I'm going to go into classic mode. So that that is your, sort of your next level up from where you, you've got four levels. Four, four levels of Rapidus. No Rapidus. Rapidus core disabled. Classic mode and Rapidus mode. So we're going to go for the, we're on level three Rapidus here, classic mode, which is the um, kind of your legacy compatibility mode while Rapidus is actually active. So we press escape, save and exit. Oh, that's nice. I, I don't remember being in basic before we went in there, but never mind. Uh, well, we'll just do a power off. Oh, God. Rapidus core. Uh, come on. What the fuck? Ah, I see. We appear to have spontaneously lost the contents of the Ultimate One N One Megabyte NV RAM here, because I had that set to Altera Basic. PBI BIOS has spontaneously turned itself off. PBI device ID is spontaneously reset to zero. Let's see if we can try that again.
Okay, so this is classic mode. There we go. Let's see how hard disk still works. So that's going to be a colossal pain in the fucking ass for whoever is using this machine. That every so often the ultimate one megabyte NVRAM is going to completely lose its contents. What happens when we press reset in this mode? It hangs. Oh, and it, now it's rebooted. Oh, well, it's better than nothing. It's better than hang. All right, all right. So let, let, let's try going into basic as well to see what happens there. You press reset in basic. Yeah, and it hangs. All right, let's go into the repeaters configuration menu and, and pick the mode which I think really, really shines here and really shows that it had some thought put into it. Fantastic. So classic uh, repeaters mode anyway, this is the fully accelerated mode. I'm leaving all the defaults as they are because there's nothing written anywhere that any of this is incompatible with ultimate one megabyte. <sighs> so save and exit. So now we've got the native 65C816 Dracos operating system. And uh, uh, what's happened here? Oh, God. Oh. Need something to do while you're stuck in the house? <laughs> got a broken Atari? Looking for some interesting software? Well, head on over to atari8.co.uk today. We've got everything you could possibly need. So the machine is continuing to warm up here. I did a take of this previously, you know, and I forgot to hit record. So the, the machine must be pretty much cooking by now. So let's let's do a power cycle and see if that helps. Actually, in the previous take, the unfilmed take of this video, things looked a lot better. I, 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 the conclusion was quite positive, but now you're going to get the... Now you're going to get the runt conclusion. Okay, so I'll power cycle here. So this is fully X. Oh, come on, for fuck's sake. This is fully accelerated 20 megahertz mode with the native mode Dracos 65816 operating system. So you can see how fast and responsive this is fully accelerated 20 megahertz. See how quick the hard disk is, just listing a directory. RW test there. Look how quick everything is. And of course, there's the uh, wrapper disk driver that I provide as well, which patches the PBI BIOS. I think you get about 180 kilobytes per second. All very, very good stuff. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Right, now what happens when you press reset in this mode? And it actually works, it resets the machine. Oh, this is brilliant. Great, what happens when you go into basic? And press reset here and still be in basic yes this is fantastic all right now we're talking now we're cooking with gas so providing the machine's owner wants to run in accelerated mode 100 percent of the time the machine works like a dream so anyway this does appear to work fairly consistently well um the accelerated mode now i don't know why the classic mode and the the completely deactivated mode have such a hell of a hard time uh, it's really annoying and I don't think anything's going to be done about it until the people who designed the hardware actually look into it. But uh, we talked it through quite a lot three years ago and the discussions never went anywhere. I think people got offended because I was uh, lodging a criticism. So I, I don't know what's to be done about that. Um, I did say on Facebook a short while ago that I was disinclined to uh, install Repeaters and Ultimate One Megabyte together until something was actually done about this. It's not that I'm totally dissatisfied with the outcome with this machine. What I'm really annoyed about is the fact that it took three weeks to get here. And it could just go on and on and on because there's always a part of me that wants to make sure the machine's perfect when it goes back to the owner. And it isn't perfect. And I don't like sending stuff uh, back which has some sort of glitch or an inherent fault because to me it's not stable. So, but I can't really install this stuff together on the off chance that it's going to work or on the off chance that it's going to require the machine to sit here for two or three weeks or more while I, while I try different fixes and CPU swaps and patch wires and God knows what else. It's not really a sensible investment of time. 
It's not because I don't like installing the stuff and it's not because I don't like the devices. In no way in the sales literature does it say, oh, well, if you want to install these two things together, you need a lot of professional test equipment. That's a response to the guy who made a video the other week who re installed Rapidus and Ultimate 1 megabyte in an XE machine, I think with a VBXE as well. And um, the subtext of the video, the, in the you know, the subtitle of the video was, uh, I know a lot of people have been having problems installing these two devices together, but I've done it here and I've got no problems at all and the machine is rock solid. And then he proceeded to lecture me in comments about O2 clock stability issues, bus capacitance, and all the other shit that we've known about for 35 years, and all the shit that the people who designed Rapidus knew about for 25 years before they even started designing it. So that really wasn't anything new, and to be honest, I deleted all that shit because I was not in the mood to be lectured about that stuff after what I'd gone through trying to get this thing to work properly. So... If you can install Rapidus and Ultimate One Megabyte in a machine and it works first time, or you did, it didn't work first time and you've got a f***ing oscilloscope on the shelf and you want to probe the bus and spend two weeks f***ing about with it, that's great. You do you. I have no problem with it. But for me, I haven't got a scope yet. I do need to get one because every machine I'm talking about for repairs, because every machine I get now... Gone are the days when I just used to plug syscheck into the back for the most part and say, oh, it's a bad CPU or it's just a couple of MTD RAMs that need swapped. Those days appear to have been gone for about a year now because every machine I send, get sent now, virtually every machine that has a legitimate fault now is sent either with a completely burned out CPU with scorched earth RAM area of the board uh, which was just kind of a, can I even fix this project? Well, I couldn't. Or it just requires such an enormous amount of troubleshooting um, that, yeah, it requires specialist equipment. I don't know why this is. I don't know where all the easy repairs are going. Maybe all the easy repairs have already been done. I don't know. But that's the reality of the situation. I do not expect that investment of time and effort to install two upgrades in an 800XL. I'm sorry, but I don't. I mean, if the owner is happy to get the machine back where it glitches on the reset key or reboots here and there, that's fine. But it's not really something I like to put my name to. That's the problem. Uh, but there's nothing I can do about it. I've done what was requested of me. I've installed everything. It's nice and neat. Everything's rooted beautifully. It's been tested. But uh, don't, don't, no, don't come to me and start schooling me about bus instability in this kind of thing, high-speed circuits. I know it's a high-speed circuit. I'm well aware, and I'm sure the people who designed Rapidus were well aware of the potential problems of putting a high-speed circuit into a 35-year-old computer. Not an entirely awful outcome. I mean, the machine's very nice. It's been cleaned up, uh, and it looks new, actually. It's really, really nice, and I mean, it's quite a formidable machine. Um, in accelerated mode here, uh, especially. Uh, very fast and, uh, yeah, quite predictable. Um, oh, and it just locked up. <laughs> couldn't, you couldn't make it up, could you? Quite predictable in this mode, and then I press the reset key, and the system locks up. Oh, oh God. Anyway, um, I'll leave you with that picture. That just about sums it up. So, um... Yes, I hope you uh, enjoyed that one, and uh, if you did, do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Um, doing the best I can to keep going here, and uh, and if you uh, if you've already been in touch about Rapidus or you're thinking about getting in touch about Rapidus, an ultimate one megabyte, um, I'll, I'm happy to talk to you about it. But I'm just I'm starting to get browned off about this stuff now. I mean, the power supply I'm using puts out 5.28 volts, measured across the CPU, 3 amps. Uh, so it's not a power issue, unless it needs even more power. How many does it need? How many volts does it need? 6? 7? But it's, it's kind of frustrating at this point. But uh, anyway, yes, so I just kind of wanted to wrap this one up. I've got any, any further bulletins about this machine. And of course, as usual... Um, anything I'm not sure about when I send the machine back. New information comes to light in the future. I'm more than happy for the owner to send the machine back and, and work on it. 
um, if it's you know some sort of extra step I can take or some sort of fix or stability improvement more than happy to do that at no extra cost um, but yes um, so thanks again for watching and uh, all being well I will see you in the next video uh, bye bye for now